me, is this seat taken? Good dog hair on the lens. Friends with me. Oh, you loving me again? Oh, you're so cute. Thank you. So next order of business is to take the shift knob off. And now the center console. Which is a Phillips number two sized screw. And there's a total of five screws in all, one on each side, one in the center, and two more inside the glove compartment on the armrest. The, the what they call the dust boot, which is what seals the shifter into the top of the transmission on this car needs to be replaced. So we've ordered up a new one, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this off. Uh, these are 10 mil bolts. We're gonna do it the easy way today with the, the little impact down here. trick is to get this guy off. This isn't always easy to do. Once it's on there, it doesn't like to slide too well. So you may, you know, if you're insulated, usually you do both of these at the same time. You do this one and the other one, and this one's usually totally gone. It's fallen apart and it needs to be replaced, but this one doesn't. This one's actually in great shape. So we're gonna have to put a little bit of lubricant in here so that we can slide this up and over. Now we'll do that real quick. Right. Put a little bit of that in there. There we are. Tight fit. Vaseline just to help this help the process along. Put a little bit of that on there. So that when we do get this thing moving, it'll stay moving. We're almost there. I'm just 
rocking it back and forth and slowly getting it to come up. Almost there. Hard on the fingers. There we have. So. As you can see, all of the uh, all the rings are intact. This, like I said, this one's been replaced very recently, and uh, it's still in very good shape. So definitely would be use, reusing that one. It should last a long time. So now we're we've got access to the, the stick here. It also bolts on with 10 mil bolts or little cap screws if you want to be picky about what the name is for them but so you've got uh, three of them on here as you can see this this is the dust boot here it's this metal ring with this rubber so from here to here is the seal that's what they call the dust boot and they always rip so if we were to put this in gear right now you can see the actual shift ball here and you shouldn't be able to this should be stretched and it should be sealed up so what we're going to do is replace that now. So we're going to take our drill here. We're going to undo those. it up and out and you can see the gear oil leaking off of it so what you want to do is definitely have a paper towel at the ready or a rag or whatever you want to use just to make sure you clean that up right away and that way you're not going to drip it on your interior I always like to have a little uh, a little tray handy as well just to make sure that it doesn't uh, leak anywhere if you want to have a look inside there what we've got you can see that uh, the gear oil that's in there it's, it appears to be pretty old. I don't think it's been changed in a really long time. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a vacuum pump or a little suction pump and we're going to suck as much of that out as we can and then we're going to refill it with new fluid before we put this back together. Okay, so now we're going to we're going to glove up for this part of the job. I should have probably gloved up already, but um, this is the messy part of the situation. So what we're going to do is get our gloves on because what we have to do now is remove the this part from here now this doesn't come over very well right this actually has to slide this way over the shaft so before we can do that we have to take our knife And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our knife in here and we're gonna careful being careful not to scratch the shaft. We're gonna try and cut through this part here. Now you can use a knife or you could you pair of shop scissors to do this part if you wanted to. But uh, just kinda gotta go at it a couple times and then you can take this part off like that. So we've just cut that off. That before would have been attached to here, before it wore out. So we've got that off, back in there. Uh, now we've got a decent shot of getting this off. We may have to trim the remainder of the rubber away from here. As you can see underneath, this is metal with rubber fused onto it, right? 
So we'll just put the knife down for a second and see if we can see if we can work this over there now. There we go. So it's a pretty tight fit even now. So there we are. That was relatively easy. So now what we want to do is clean as much of this junk off of the uh, the shift ball as we can. And also while we're here, we want to have a good look at the little nylon bushing at the very tip. That's this part here. You want to make sure there's no cracks in it. And see, you know, just check for wear. This one, it's probably the original. But uh, it appears to be usable. It's still in decent shape. Uh, if we had a spare one, you know, we could put that one on. I think they're, I think Mazda charges almost $10 for for one of those. I think it's eight to ten dollars for one. So it's worth worth repairing or replacing if you if you love your Miata and if you notice any kind of damage on it. But like I said, this one looks pretty good. The other thing you want to take a good look at is uh, this bushing here. That there sits like that. The plastic part itself on here, I've never really seen a worn out one. But what you will find is that this little metal retaining clip on the top, these will break. There's a, little, there's a little spring clip. And they usually, I've seen quite a few broken ones. And what you want to do, if you do have a broken one and you don't have a replacement, take the whole, take the metal clip off. It just pops off. Take it off and get rid of it and make sure you've got all the bits. Because uh, if that gets into the mechanism, it can cause you problems down the road. So just keep an eye open for that. This one looks okay. It's got some wear, definitely has some wear on it, but uh, I'm actually going to take a closer look at this one. Now I've had a, a better look at it. I'm seeing what looks, it looks to be cracked in the center, right there. You see the lights catching it. It's, uh, doesn't feel like a crack. Usually they just crack in half. They don't crack down the center normally, but I'm just being careful here. Yeah. So anyway, that's that. So like I say, inspect all of the uh, consumables, all the broke, all the bits that can wear out and break while you've got this thing apart. So this and that. Now usually it's uh, usually that's okay. This is okay, and it's that one. That's the one you're gonna watch out for. And then what we'll do is we'll uh, we'll get our replacement parts. And then we'll reinstall in just a moment. Okay, so now we've got uh, we've got our parts ready to rebuild this unit. So we'll do it right here on the floor. So what we've got is we've got this all stripped down. Um, that's our old uh, spring clip that goes on top of this bushing, like that. This one's got some wear on it, so uh, we have a new one on hand, so we're going to use it. So this is the new one, and that there's the part number for it, right here, available through the dealer. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll install this part here. It just clips in, nice and easy, just like that. So it's actually quite a bit thicker than this one, if you can see that. So that should give us, uh, that should help really tighten things up. Now, we're going to attempt to put a new nylon bushing on. That's the part number for it. Actually, no, it isn't. That's the location number. The part number, if I can peel this back for you, hang on. There you are. There's your part number. Right there. And that's the nylon bushing that goes on the end of the, right here. So what we'll do is we're gonna attempt to remove that in a moment. So the, the dust boot that we're gonna use, this is the one that seals this, it goes around here and seals this onto the transmission, is this one. We're working on a 1.6 liter. And the 1.6 liter transmission takes this particular boot here. That's the round metal base, just like the one that came off. It's the, uh, M514, and that's the part number there. If you have a 1.8 liter, uh, 94 to 05, the boot is slightly different. 
It doesn't have that big metal ring on it. It's got the smaller one. And it has a taller boot on it as well. So that's the one to use if you have, it's the M513. And that's the one to use if you have a 94 to 05 with a 1.8 liter. So next we're gonna try to pop off the, uh, the nylon bushing here. There is a trick to doing this from what I understand. I'm told the trick is to use a wrench, which is not going to do it. I'm just try and use some pliers, actually. So usually you break these when you try and get them off. So, so don't try and take it off unless you get a new one. There we are. So all I did was I grabbed the very end of it with these pliers and I just twisted it off and it popped off no problem. Now that's our that's our ball. Our ball's in good shape. It's got a little nick on it there, which isn't going to cause us any trouble. And we'll put the uh, the new the new bushing on there. Now we may have to apply some pressure to get this on. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a little bit of Vaseline in here to help it along, just to make sure that we can get this on here nice nicely. Now what we'll do is I'm going to put it in the cap of the Vaseline here. There it is. Nice and easy. I did it on here so that we don't scratch this up on the concrete. So you want to be careful of that because you don't want to ruin your nice new shift foot there. So okay, so the next part of the operation here is we're going to put the dust boot on and we're gonna reinstall this. Don't forget to put this on first, because if you do, this has gotta come off, and that's not gonna to wanna to come off once it's on there. So, so make sure you take your time, double check, make sure everything's in place, then put this on. There we are. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna put a lot of this on, because this is a very tight fit once it goes on, so. Once we've done that, you can see how tight that's going to be. Yeah, so. And you wait and hear the snap when this thing goes all the way. There it is. And that's how it is. So you can tell on the old one, it was torn right here. This is the new one. It should last you know, quite a long time. Probably last 100,000 K if you're lucky, depending on your environment, of course. So, all cleaned up, looking good. So, we're ready to reinstall. Now, what we're going to do first, though, is we're going to suck all of the old fluid out of the, uh, what they call the turret, which is the, where this goes into, and it has its, on a 1.6, it has its own little reservoir of fluid in there. It's two or three ounces of gear oil. And we're going to pull out the old stuff, and we're going to put new stuff in before we reass reassemble it. Okay, so what we've got here, we've got our little Pella pump, which I love this thing. Also known as an uh, oil extractor. And this is perfect for sucking out, uh, you know, little bits of fluid like that. Especially if you want to change your brake fluid or your clutch fluid, you can suck out the old stuff out of the reservoirs with this and put new stuff in and it takes you five minutes. So it's a great way to stay on top of your maintenance and keep your fluids fresh. So what we're going to do is we're going to feed that in there. And I'm going to pump it up. This 
So we've got lots of pressure in the in the uh, oil extractor now. You know, this fluid isn't moving very well. It's pretty thick. It's had a chance to cool down, I think. It's a cold day today. We're probably only a couple of degrees here. So we're slowly, ever so slowly pulling that out of there. Still, still sucking it out, so it's good news. And if you put it down where I've got it, right here, it manages to get, oh, well, there you go, so it's. It manages to get almost to the bottom there. So. We'll give it another go. We'll try and get as much out as we can. You know, just like a trip to the dentist. There. Being very careful not to drip any of this stuff on your seats. Gear oil's messy, messy stuff. So. So now you can get a better look at what's going on there. You want to be careful not to lose any of your uh, paper towel in there as well. But uh, we've had a good, a good clean up. You can see there's also a uh, a nylon bushing here. You can see that move around. That one looks to be in good condition. So, so there we are. We lost a screw down here, see? Gotcha. Now that we've got that back together, what we want to do is we want to line this channel up with this post here. And these are sometimes a little bit tricky because the uh, the receiver in there that this fits into is a very tight fit. So we may have to try it a couple of different times. So so make sure you line this up and try to make sure that ball, that little shift, uh, that little bushing there is lined up nice and straight for when you go in. And then you just gotta kinda play with it until it goes all the way in. Like I mean, sometimes you have to put a little bit of pressure on it, see if you can get it to click in. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So back off and try again. If you went in doubt, take another look at it. Take a look at where it's going to go into. Let's see if you can get it to line up. Sometimes you get it the first time, sometimes it takes six, seven times to, to get it to go in nice. Because it is a very tight fit, especially with a new, a new bushing as well. So, just keep trying until we get it. So that's not in. It's all about our, because this moves so much, it's hard to get it to go in square into where we want it to go. So that's that's why this is the trick this is the trickiest part of the whole the whole job here.
There it is. You see how that clicked in? So now that's in the way it should be. We're going to reinsert these guys. Thread them up by hand first to make sure they're threaded properly and not cross threaded. Make sure you get the right ones in there. These are a graded bolt and they don't have a washer on. These are just, these are the ones that hold the, the insulator boot on and these ones are the ones that hold this together. I'm going to carefully use this to get them all the way down. And then we'll torque them down with the uh, just with the regular one here. So now we're going to reinstall the insulator boot. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our Vaseline because that's essential to get this thing to fit back over here smoothly. So we're going to put some Vaseline on here. And we're going to put some on the collar of this boot as well. I'm going to put some right in there. And once you've got that on, it makes your life a whole lot easier. So that's the orientation of it. Skinny end facing this way, the, the wider end facing towards the front. So I'm going to get it positioned over there. Make sure the carpet isn't pinched underneath it. So get it in position. Make sure this is on top as well. And then the Vaseline allows you to just quickly push that down. You can wipe it off. Okay, so we're going to put a little bit of anti-seize compound on the bolts that hold the hold that dust boot in place, or the uh, insulator boot in place. The reason we do this is because as these cars age, uh, these bolts can get kind of rusty. That one there, it's got a little bit of rust on the end. These are in really good shape, considering this car is a 1991. But uh, the other side of where these screw in is actually exposed to the elements underneath the car. So by doing this, you know, if somebody has to take this thing apart again in another 10 years or whenever, um, they should have no problem getting these back out and they won't break off if they're all rusty because they won't get rusty with the stuff on. So that's why we go the extra little, the extra little bit of distance here just to make sure that we do it right. I'm sure there's this torque spec for them, but I just do it by hand and you know I'm just using two fingers. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on. There's a little bit of a washer that's that's inside here as well. So you're just crushing that washer down a little bit. And it's just just firm, not uh, not overly tight. So there we have it. So that's back together, everything's in the right position. So once you've done that, you can uh, put your console back on, your armrest and uh, center console. And button it back up and you're all finished. You're going to have a nice sh nice smooth shifter now. Uh, no moving, no broken parts or old fluid in there. And all of the sand and dirt that's on the road isn't going to end up in your shift mechanism. And then what we also want to watch for is these little clips here. 
Um, quite often they're missing. Um, there's one there and one there and one here. Now, the one on the bottom usually sticks into the surround here, so we can wiggle that out and then reinsert that clip back in where it belongs, like so. And then it helps us to get a better fit when we put this back together. So remembering to plug in the hazard light switch like that. And then those clips there, we'll plug in like so. And then we'll remember to put in the two screws that hold this bracket in place that hide up in behind the eyeball vents. Followed by the eyeball vents themselves. There we are. And voila. So last screw. There we are. Okay, so she's all back together and now we do speakers.